Okay, so I, sh I showed yesterday that basically you could get away with playing most games without any problem on the Intel graphics card. It's, it's not a bad card. It's not a bad first attempt. I would say it's about equal to where AMD's graphics cards are in terms of compatibility. Maybe not in terms of performance, but, you know, yeah, having more competition is great. <laughs> and AMD, the well, one place that no graphics card manufacturer has been able to pull anything from NVIDIA is compute. You know, and especially right now, because we got stable diffusion. We have all these language models that people are using. And it doesn't it doesn't matter if this card could you know, I could use this. If I wasn't a geek, well now that gets confusing. <laughs> but if all I did was play games, this is fine. I could play games with this. What I can't do with this is generate anime girls using stable diffusion yet. Or any anything using stable diffusion. I can't use... Yeah, yet. I have to say yet, because I, I, got, I got a whole big long thing about that. I can't use... Um, where is it? Yeah, I can't use programs like Daz Studio. I can't use rendering programs. You know, I can't use this stuff on on uh, the Intel hardware, and I have to render things using my CPU. Um, what else? Um, you could do video editing stuff, but it's flaky here and there. But it's also flaky here and there on AMD. Um, you know, it's a chicken chicken or egg kind of problem where the developers don't have this stuff in their hands and there's not enough people with this stuff in their hands for there to be a demand for the developers to give a shit to make the things work with it unless Intel and their developer relations teams works with those companies or those, you know, independent developers. So that's a problem. But the interesting thing is, yeah, and then beg, basically. So I wrote here that N NVIDIA has had their um, GPU-based compute language CUDA since 2007. And they have another technology called Optics, which is a ray tracing API, which has been around since 2009. And Intel also has a compute and compiler API called Parallel Studio that came out in 2009. And they also have another thing that's kind of like Optics called Ombre, which is their ray tracing API, and that's been around since 2011. Now, the interesting thing is, since 2018, they've been working, uh, Intel has been working on unifying. Uh, their compute APIs into a thing called One API. And with One API, they also have a special thing that will help developers take their CUDA compatible code and get 80 to 90% of it converted to a universal language called Sickle, which is kind of a dark name, Sickle. <laughs> Use on a Sickle. Um, but you could, but they could get like ninety percent of the way converted off of CUDA to Sickle, and in tw and next year, yeah, it's fine. And next year they are going to be having support for, you know, like how Nvidia has their Tensor cores and the RT cores on their on their uh, you know RTX graphics cards. Well, Intel has a thing called their vector engine and their um, 
XE matrix extensions on the chip of this. And nothing uses that right now, aside from their, um, their anti-aliasing and upscaling tech that they have. And some developers use that, some stuff has that anti-aliasing. So it works, but it's universal too. It'll work on NVIDIA, work on AMD, it works on Intel. And where was I going with this? So basically, in 2023, they have right now, it's, they say Q1 2023. They're going to be adding support into one API to have support for those things on these GPUs. So I'm thinking that Intel has done more than AMD has done has done to try to displace NVIDIA by basically being like, we're going to do the heavy lifting of converting your NVIDIA proprietary code. And you just have to do a little tiny little bit of work to convert the stuff that we can't automatically do for you to make things work. But it's not here yet. And I agree, down with NVIDIA, but, you know... You kind of have to have them right now. They're the only thing that just plainly works. You stick an NVIDIA card in your computer and you could do like everything. <laughs> and it's annoying because once you start wanting to do everything, you also want a whole bunch of VRAM. And now you're paying like $1,500 for a card because you need more than 10 gigs of VRAM. And that's stupid. When you could win, like, this one isn't the one. You know, this is, you know, the A750, which only has 8 gigs of VRAM. But the A770 has 16 gigs. I wish Intel sent me that one, because I would have a whole lot more incentive to... Learn basically anything to make some of these open source projects work on the Intel card. Because with 16 gigs of VRAM, that would be the card in my house that has the most VRAM. It would, it would be better than my 2080 Ti. That would be cool. Oh, and we should. I mean, I can right now. Because that's something you can't do on this, and this isn't in, in my computer right now. <laughs> and that's the reason why it's not in there. Because I can't do anything with it. I don't just play games. Like, 90% of the time I'm on my computer, I'm fucking around with, like, stupid projects. Or making things that I can't show on stream. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, another thing I have to touch on, you know, is I'm mad at a lot of the reviewers out there because, especially Linus Tech Tips, like, I, th I feel like they put the bare minimum into trying to figure out how these, how this card works. There's a whole bunch of outlets out there that say, you know, this has AV1 codec encoding, but nothing uses it. We can't even test it. It's like, yes, you can. It's built into the driver overlay. You hit Alt-I, and it doesn't work because I don't have the card in. Then you get this overlay on your screen. Then you go to recording, and then... You could pick your codec, and you could record your computer using the AV1 codec. I have tons of videos I recorded of gameplay using it. It works great. It looks... It's the highest quality codec out of all the ones that are built into the card. Yes, OBS doesn't have it, but how many developers of OBS do you think have these cards? That's the problem. We get into the chicken or the egg problem again, and it just boggles my mind. And as long as we keep having reviewers being like, oh man, this new card sucks. 
watch it have artifacts on our video. It, they can't even do DirectX 11. We're not going to try to make it work. We're just going to show you it doesn't. And fuck that. Because all it takes is like five minutes. You download a wrapper and now you're converting DirectX 11 to Vulkan and it works. <laughs> So th this this has been my thing for a while. I hate a, most hardware reviewers. I hate them. I think they're lazy. They like to automate things. They like to set up scripts to do stuff. And back when I was reviewing hardware, like two or three years ago, I would sit there and manually do everything, manually input everything, verify everything, because I was sitting next to the computer watching it do the thing. And if it started to do, do something, I was like, oh, this is weird. I would stop it right there because I'm doing it. And the first thing that I would usually do when I would get a new graphics card, new processor, is I would put it in my main computer and use it. It would be the thing I try to use. And... Honestly, when I had a 6700 XT from AMD, I, I think I lasted two days. Couldn't last. This, about the same. Intel card, I couldn't do it. I use too many things that are NVIDIA. It doesn't matter what CPU, you, CPU I use, though. I mean, every, every CPU is good. If it's good, it's good. But GPUs are... NVIDIA just works. And somebody has to stop them. Please stop NVIDIA. Stop Jensen. Take his leather coat away. He's not allowed to have it anymore.